Hello guys and welcome to the video. I am very excited today because supposedly this is going to be the last video you guys see before I get monetized. So I just want to take a second and thank every one of you for supporting this channel and watching my videos. A special thank you to everybody that shared and commented and liked any of the videos. A lot of you actually shared my channel on your Instagram stories, on Facebook links, and it really helps out. And even if it didn't, I really appreciate the support. So thank you very much guys. Couldn't have done it without you. As a special treat, I'm going to show you how to get a killer metal tone using only your computer and some plugins. I get this question a lot and it's really simple really. I basically just have two tones that I use for metal. Okay, so first things first, you're gonna need four things to do this. You're gonna need a guitar, you're gonna need a cable, an audio interface, and obviously a computer. Now these plugins actually work on any DAW, <clears throat> so you don't have to have Logic like I do. You can have Pro Tools, Nuendo, Cubase, etc. It'll work fine. One thing I want to point out is that the better the audio interface, the more real it's going to sound. What do I mean by that? If you have a $4,000 guitar plugged into a $200 interface, it's going to sound like a $200 interface. And vice versa, if you have a $4,000 interface, but you plug in a $200 guitar into it, then it'll sound like a $200 guitar. You're actually going to get more of the real sound of the guitar out of a better audio interface. You're going to get less noise, more harmonic content, and more depth. That's also true for the cable. You never think about the cable, but if you have a $5 cable, your guitar is gonna sound like a $5 cable. So I basically just have four tones that I use. Two of them are for rhythm, and two of them are for lead. Okay, so let me show you how to get them. Okay, so let's get to the screen. Okay, so here we are. First thing you gotta do, you gotta tune the guitar. If you don't know how to tune your guitar, make sure you watch this video right here. Now, if you don't have a tuner, you can always go into your DAW and look for a tuner. There's always a built-in one there. I usually use something like this, because I don't really like the tuners that are built into the DAWs because they're just not as good as the real thing. Just like the plugin is never as good as the real amp. That being said, you can definitely get some killer tones out of the plugins. Okay, so this is my metal tone number one. This is rhythm. For this tone here, I'm going to use IK Multimedia Amplitude 4. And I always use it in stereo. Okay, so this is a clean guitar by itself. That's what the guitar sounds like. Okay, so we're gonna go in steps. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this pedal. If you're a guitar player, you need to own this pedal. This pedal is like Parmesan cheese or bacon. It'll make anything better if you just add it to it. We're just gonna use the Amplitude one. It's in distortion and it's called the Overscream, which is basically, obviously, a Tube Screamer. And we're gonna use the famous TV Raybon setting, which is no drive, all the level, and tone at about six. Okay, you can definitely hear some grit there. The cool thing about the TS9 is that it actually times your sound, but it pushes the input of the preamp so that you get some nice compression and a little bit of saturation as well. You need to get this pedal. Okay, for the amplifier, or the preamp rather, we're going to use the angled Powerwall. I love this amp. Now the TS9 is very important here. Look, check it out. This is this is what it sounds like without the TS9 engaged. And this is with the TS9 engaged. See how much tighter that got? Now for the cap, I don't really like the angle cap here as much. Because it's got a lot of muddy low end. So what I like to use is the Marshall cabinet. Now, funny enough, I actually like the slanted cabinet better than the straight one, but on the plug-in, I like the straight one better. And now it sounds like this. As you can see, I didn't really mess much with the EQ or the settings on the amplifier. I get enough of a change just by switching out the cabinets, and that's awesome. So right now I'm pretty happy with the sound. It's just a little bit noisy because of the TS9 and the high gain on the angle. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into the threshold knob here and we're just gonna push it up. <clears throat> now the more threshold you have, the less noise is gonna come through. But if you push it too hard, it's gonna kill your sustain. So you gotta find that thin line. I found that with this guitar, it works best at about 58. So it's pretty silent. And when you do play, <laughs> 
you still get that attack. Okay, so that's it for my tone number one. Now my tone two, or tone one B, is basically the same thing, just with added delay for the leads and the solos. So what I do is I go into the rack A, and I engage the delay. I like to keep the BPM engaged so that it is set to whatever tempo the song is in. And for me, the one eighth setting for the value, which means that it's gonna play an eighth of a note behind you. So you can set it to an eighth, to a quarter, to a sixteen note, and you can actually do triplets or even a dotted eighth. I just like the regular eighth. And then for the feedback, I like to keep it at about 28. That's if I want it to actually come through a lot. Okay, so that should definitely be a starting point for you. Then you would definitely need to tweak it to your own liking. But I think this is a fine starting point. I always tweak it a little bit more after all the tracks are laid down. Okay, so that's my number one tone for metal. Let's check out my second tone. Okay, so this is tone two. Let me know how you feel about tone one in the comment section down below. And if you liked it, drop me a like. And at the end of this part, make sure you drop me a comment and tell me which one you like better. What I really like about tone one is that it's all based on amplitude 4. This one, however, is going to have four different plugins. One for the pedal, one for the head, one for the cabinet, and one for the delay. So it's a little bit more intricate, but the thing is, all these plugins just do one thing, but they do it right. Okay, so we're gonna follow the signal chain. I'm not gonna get into that, but we're basically just going to go in steps. Okay, so here we go. Again, this is the clean guitar by itself. Okay, so again, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a pedal. What pedal are we gonna use? A Tube Screamer, of course. So for this tone, I use a TSC Tube Screamer. Okay, so I preloaded the plugins because I couldn't load them and record at the same time. So for this guy, I used the Mercurial TSC, which is this guy here. Again, we're gonna use the same setting. So no drive, all the level, and the tone at about six. You can eyeball it. So this is the guitar by itself. And this is with the plugin engaged. See again, we already get some compression and a little bit of grit. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we need the amplifier. So what I use here is the Emissary. Now the good thing about this thing is that it's actually free. So you can just go onto the website and download it. And here we go. This is what it sounds like with it and the TS9. Yes. Sounds really fussy. Now, why does it sound like that? Because it's not going through a speaker yet. What we need to is get an impulse response or a speaker for this. If you plug in a pedal or your amplifier straight into the input of the audio interface, this is what you're gonna get. Unless you're going out of an emulated cabinet output. So here we go. So thanks to Alex at Lancaster Audio, I have all their impulse responses. I got it as a part of a contest that Glenn Fricker was running at Spectre Music Group. So thanks guys. Okay, so basically what I do, even though I have all the impulse responses, I usually just default to the same thing, the 1960 Marshall cabinet with a G12H, 75 watts. And why do I keep going to the cabinet? Because it's the one that I actually own, so I know exactly what that sounds like. So here we go, Marshall cabinet. And this is basically different microphone configurations. So I'm just gonna use the 1A, which is basically the standard, a Shure 57 and the Sennheiser. So now it sounds like this. Now it actually sounds like a guitar. Okay, so as you can hear, it's a little bit noisy. So what I do is I just add a noise gate. Same as I did on the amplitude. Okay, so we do the same thing. We move the threshold. So you can actually hear a cut. And then you just play. Okay, that's good enough. I actually have some room, so I'm gonna push it up a little bit more. Okay, so we have nice attack. But see? 
That's too much. We'll just back it up. 20 seems to work fine. Okay, so that's basically it for my second tone. You can hear the sound on my tribute cover to Chuck, Crystal Mountain. Now the only thing that's left to do, if you have to, is just add the delay to this. So you can just use whatever delay you have available and it'll work fine. Okay guys, so I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Please drop me a comment if you did, so I can make better videos for you. And I would love to know, which tone do you like better? Tone number one or tone number two? Okay guys, so that's it for me. Thank you so very much for sticking around. Don't forget to drop me a like, dislike, or a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. Pat out. I'll see you next time. Metal on, dudes.